Hey guys, welcome back to today's show. Can we talk about all of the cute uh, Christmas things going on on the set today? I mean, stop it. We have trees, we have wreaths, we have gifts, we have earrings, right? Gingerbread earrings. So happy holidays to you. I'm so glad that you're uh, returning back. And uh, today we're going to be talking about how global travel is impacting travel agents, how global travel will change for travel agents in the future. So if you're wondering how's, co how's COVID impacting the global market, how to adapt if you sell an area that you can't send people to right now, that could be devastating to your business, right? What you should do about it. And then tangible things you should be doing right now so you don't lose momentum in your travel business. So those seem interesting, keep on watching. I wanna also remind you, if you're not already uh, subscribed definitely make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell. That way you get notified when our new content comes out to help you continue to grow your travel business. We have new videos every single week. So let's get started. If you're, it's your first time to the channel, I want to say welcome. My name is Cindy Williams. I started in the travel industry over 25 years ago. I was just a baby, 19 years old when I started. And uh, I own and operate my own award-winning, nationally recognized travel agency. And I'm also the CEO of, you've probably heard of it, Careers on Vacation, which helps people just like you launch, grow, and supersize portable, profitable travel businesses. So that's my day job. Enough about me. Let's continue to discussing how global travel will change for travel agents. So a few of the trends that I've been seeing as a travel industry expert, there are some things that my colleagues and people in the industry have been talking about at length lately, and some of them are challenging and other ones are really good for us. So I want to talk about a few things. So the first one is travel bans and shutdowns. You should expect some of this happening in the foreseeable future, right? So the good news is we have vaccines that are in route. We have plans that are taking place around the world to get people vaccinated. So we're coming out of the tail end of this, we all feel like, which is a really good thing. But it doesn't mean we couldn't have a spike in a certain area of the world um, or like here in the US, right? We're all we're filming this video in early December and um, let's face it, the numbers are not great in the US. So a lot of us are like back to okay, <laughs> like I was traveling. I spent a month in Florida in October and we're actually going back to Florida in a few weeks. But for Thanksgiving, we were supposed to go to Florida again and I was like, huh, let's just stay home, right? So there's a little, being flexible is what I'm getting at is gonna be important. And also being really on top of that information. So expect shutdowns. You know, we saw this happen with Hawaii just recently. They removed their travel ban, right? They said, hey, you can come to Hawaii now. We're not gonna make you do that, that stinky 14 day quarantine anymore. But then the island of Kauai reinstated it. So all of our clients that were booked over Christmas for Kauai, a lot of them wanted to cancel because no one wants to sit in their hotel room, right, for a week or two. So you have to expect that some of that stuff is going to happen and just kind of be ready for it. Try to have an open mind and be flexible. That's a common trend that we can expect for the foreseeable future. Um, so the other thing, though, to think about, though, is don't let the fact that travel being more complicated right now and let me tell you i've been doing this for 25 years it is the most complicated i've ever seen it in my career right so even with booking our trips to disney which is like domestic and should be super easy hang on i need to drink i have a little frog in my throat should be super easy, but we're like, uh, what's Disney doing now? What's this change? Like every day there's like a change at Disney, right? So depending on when we're booking, like, oh, well this, this policy is in place still here. And then even like Southwest Airlines, they had the open seat policy until November and then it's not there anymore. And that, so there's a lot of moving parts of the industry right now, but here's where you win. Here's where you win this. Don't, first of all, don't let it scare you. Understand you are going to have to work harder. You're going to have to be on top of the information. If this is your chosen life path, if this is your craft, if this is your skill and what you're going to do for people, it's going to be a little harder. But here's how you win. 
This is the time where you forge amazing relationships with clients. This is the time that you can dig in your heels and solve problems for them. We have clients that normally only book international trips with us that are coming back to us. They're like, can you book our Vegas trip? Can you book our, Washington, our trip to Washington, D.C.? They're having us book the simplest trips for them because they don't have time to figure out moving parts or where do I need a COVID test or what do I need to know? They're relying on us to do our jobs. So they're coming to us for everything, right? What's the uh, Miracle on 34th? Um, part in the movie where they go to Santa Claus and Santa Claus is like you can go over here and get a better deal and the mom's like well, let me tell you something I'm coming here for everything but sliced bread and toilet paper or something I don't know I'd have to go back for the actual quote but you guys get the idea like you're building loyalty with your clients right now and also if your clients are new we have a lot of clients flooding in from that OTA world you can forge those relationships and build your book of business now is your time for travel agents to be the heroes that you are by the way if you're watching Watching this video and you're thinking about getting into the industry don't let any of this stuff scare you scare you all of this stuff can be trained but if you are just thinking about getting into the industry I want to encourage you to go check out my master class which gives you that fundamental like basics of getting into the industry the different options you have for getting into the industry based on your personal goals so definitely check that, that out you can go to careersonvacation.com forward slash master class and with that link you can get into the class for totally free it's an hour-long session that will really help you understand if getting in the industry is for you personally so moving on let's talk about um you know how are you how are your clients feeling about travel like put me a little comment below in comments tell me how your clients are feeling about travel what types of questions do they have some clients are more ready to travel than others right that's okay you just have to know how to navigate this environment we're going to talk about that next so what's another tr a big trend that i've been seeing travel suppliers are really rising to the occasion if you're in the industry right now you know this this is a huge positive and an awesome thing they're adopting what i call as the southwest Airlines model, meaning people, they're allowing people to cancel. They're allowing people to have more flexible change policies, uh, cancel last minute sometimes, get their money back. Like Disney, um, you know, was like, you can cancel right up to the day before booking kind of thing. They're having a much more, and a rebooking sometimes with credit. So kind of that really um, more flexible model. The reason that they're doing this, guys, is because they need to breed that consumer confidence right now. It makes our job so much easier because we're talking to clients right now who've been thinking about booking that cruise that they always want to do in Alaska a year from now, 18, you know, 18 months from now or whatever. And they're putting deposits down because they know if they, if they have to, they can cancel and get their money back. But they're banking on the fact that everything's going to be worked out a year, year and a half from now, right? So the travel suppliers are putting these awesome flexible policies in place it makes our job easier if you know how to relay that to your clients and communicate that but that's been a really good thing for both consumers because they can make easier buying decisions and you can sell a little bit easier with having that confidence in your back pocket um the other thing is we're seeing ridiculous deals and i think it's only going to get more insane as we go into wave season which as you know starts in a few weeks um first if you're again if you're aspiring wave season is first quarter of every year i am banking on this being the most interesting wave season ever because travel suppliers need to get revenue on their books that's the purpose of like wave season they want to they want to get stuff booked up as much as possible in first quarter so then they can back flow and see what promotions and things they need to run through the rest of the year that's kind of how wave season started way back in the day right so the thing about it is is right now travel suppliers have never been in more need to have revenue on their books so i am anticipating lots of specials specials we're already seeing huge values that are out there right now right we're booking for clients every day but i'm really expecting some cool things in wave season um so that's a win-win for you and your clients now what should you do if your area of specialty was impacted right so if your area of specialty, let's say you do cruises, which I know cruises officially, technically cruise ships can travel starting in January, but a lot of them are rolling that back to February, March now. Um, if you only sold cruises, you're like, oh my gosh, like I need to get revenue on the books. I need to get cash flow coming in. You might need to think about booking an alternative or a complimentary destination 
So as cruises returns, because you know, you could be booking that Alaskan cruise 12 or 18 months from now, and you gotta wait to get your commission until, you know, that final payment. So in the interim, what are you going to do? Think about training, getting yourself skilled in another destination that you could sell really, really quickly that is open and available for travel right now. A lot of agents have, at, have put Mexico into the fold and some areas in the Caribbean that are easier to get to. Um, Hawaii, as, as of right now, is everything but Kauai doesn't have that, Kauai has the quarantine, everything else doesn't, but what are some other areas that you can sell right now to get some cash flow on your books think about that and make that part of your short-term plan to implement really quickly um, the other thing is don't stop marketing if you stopped marketing I don't want to be the bearer of bad news that was not a good decision <laughs> that's okay that's why we're here we're gonna help you out you never stop marketing and and I don't mean that you're doing hardcore marketing because you might say well Cindy how can I market when everything's shut down in the middle of COVID just because you are not doing want to buy this now marketing doesn't mean you can't do engagement marketing. Be the person that they rely on for updates. If you're the person who's the cruise lady or the cruise guy, are you informing your clients about what's going on? What do they need to know? They still want to cruise, they're waiting. But are you making yourself the go-to person in their world that is feeding them that information so when they are ready to pull that trigger, it's you that they reach out to? Because by you putting yourself in that educational standpoint, in that sharing information standpoint, in that providing update standpoint, guess what? you're building a bond, you're keeping the relationship warm, and when they're ready to make that buying decision, they're going to reach out. So you're positioning yourself as an expert, as the person who knows everything. It's like, that's your marketing, right, in the interim. Um, I'll tell you what, Disney, when Disney shut everything down, we were like, oh, and the bookings are like, you know, just went like domino. <laughs> we're like, no, what's happening? We never for one day stopped talking about Disney. We didn't stop posting pictures. We didn't stop doing flashbacks. We went to doing virtual vacations. We added wait lists. We built out sales funnels. We did all of this marketing stuff that was happening to keep our audience warm and stay engaged with them and how are they doing. So modifying our marketing message, but we never stopped our marketing message. So guess what? When Disney opened up, we had pages and pages of people that were ready to book. Okay, so that's why you don't stop marketing. It, it's, you know, I, there was a great um, quote someone told me years ago. It was a personal trainer and they said, Cindy, when it comes to like your health, you're either moving forwards or backwards. There's no in between. And I think that that works for business too, right? You're, you're never moving, you're, you're never standing still. You're e either moving forward or backwards. That's the only choices. So if you're not moving forward, that means you're moving backwards. You don't want to be ever moving backwards in business. So at a minimum, keep that marketing where it needs to be. Um, I'm just double checking my notes here. Never, never stop marketing. I think I beat that one up pretty good. But adjust your message. Adjusting your message is great. Being mindful of what's going on, of course, is important. I'm not saying that you say everybody should be traveling right now. No, because not everyone's ready to travel. But what you could say instead is for those that are ready, we're here for you right? So it's just a small switch in how you market. It still keeps your audience engaged and in you in that expert position part, right? Um, so there's a few things I want you guys to be encouraged by that I'm seeing trend wise, right? And I don't think any of these are going to come as a huge surprise, but uh, people have cabin fever. We know this, right? They've been sitting in their homes months and months and months and they're like, get me out of here. Like I'm so ready for a vacation. Some people are already vacationing. vacationing. We are already actively booking. We have vacations happening every day at our agency. We're monitoring all of our clients' trips. All of those things are happening. Doesn't mean everyone's ready, but here's the deal. Even if they're not ready to travel in January, February, vaccines, right? We know this vaccines are kind of coming out. We know that we're hopefully at the tail end of this thing. People are having confidence about getting those deposits in for summer and fall and even forward into the next year. So don't think that you can't book those trips. People are waiting to book travel. Also, people have more vacation days than ever. They didn't take their vacation days last year because they were working from home. Why do they need to take vacation? So we have lots and lots of clients telling us they rolled over so many vacation days and they're gonna wanna use those vacation days this year. The other thing is 2020 was a big year of reflection for a lot of people. It was a hard year, you guys, for all of us, right? 
And I think all of us took a step back like to realize in our life, like what if I never got to go to Italy? What if I never got to go to Hawaii? Oh my gosh, what if I never got to go to Bali? They're moving those bucket list trips to the top because when they reopen again, they want to be there. They want to have that experience. They've been thinking about it for 10 years. Now is the time that they're going to lean in and do that. Um, and they have bigger budgets. They didn't spend their vacation dollars in 2020. So they're ready for those bucket list vacations too, which is awesome. Um, and the other, of course, thing that I mentioned earlier, but that you should be encouraged by is the need for us is so much higher. Not only are people booking those big bucket list trips, they're using us for everything right now, even if it's small weekend trips here and there. I have an agency that I work with that took our program a few years ago and she said Cindy we booked a hundred thousand dollars last week just in like little trips here and there and everywhere across their agency because the clients are coming to them for everything so remember the demand for travel agents is higher than ever as long as you know how to reach those clients so what are three things you can be doing right now to make sure you're continuing to grow your business and preparing yourself for 2021 keep your audiences warm continue to engage your audiences secondly Number two, stay informed about changes. You got to know what's going on. It's really required right now. Like I said, the climate is more complicated. You need to be on top of your game. So making sure you're reading those updates, whether you get them from your travel consortia or ASTA or travel leaders or, you know, the, all the different play the tourism boards directly, depending on what you sell, make sure you are informed about the areas that you sell and you're on top of that information. It's really important. Number three, make sure you're being strategic about your marketing. I cannot stress how important this is. If you were not getting leads before COVID, they're not going to magically just start coming through your phone. You need to make sure that you are reaching the clients that are ready to travel. So that means targeting your audience, knowing how to do strategic marketing, really getting to those people who are ready to travel. You want to also make sure you're being strategic about positioning yourself as an expert. Are you positioned as an expert for the areas that you sell? Um, and then also sell your updated areas and keep informing others. So if you did have to, like, let's say you sold cruises and you decided to add Hawaii and Mexico or some other things that are Disney or whatever into your mix to get extra cash flow in the interim until cruises fully returns, then make sure your marketing plan addresses those changes and that you are marketing and have effective plans in place for those areas. So you're reaching clients who want to buy that stuff and they end up on your bank account, right? <laughs> that you're converting them. Um, and then stop duct taping your marketing. I see so much crazy marketing out there, you guys. I can't even stop. Like, I just want to stop and help people, but like, there's only so many hours in the day. If, you know, if you really want to get your travel business into a well-oiled machine, you have to have proven systems, real marketing in place. If that overwhelms you and you know that you need help with that, maybe consider Careers on Vacation. That's our 12-week mastermind that will walk you through how to get proven systems in place, will help you set up your marketing, will help make sure your branding's on point, get you positioned as an expert, do all the things that we're talking about in this video, and so you can really take advantage of this resurgence of people coming back to travel agents even more than were before. So we're very optimistic. So if you'd like to do that, go to careersonvacation.com for more information. But just as a brief overview, Careers on Vacation is uh, ASTA affiliated, the American Society of Travel Advisors. And uh, you get access to my team of experts, the same team that got my travel business from six figures a month to six figures, no, six figures a year to six figures a month. I love six figures a day. We're working on it. We'll let you know when we get there. But you get, you get, ex you get access to those experts as well as we teach you how to put those same systems in place for your business. And it's self-paced curriculum. So even if you have another job or you have school or things going on, you can do the curriculum on your uh, time frame. And check out our 90 plus case studies, you guys. We're filming new ones every week, so we're gonna be over 100 like before the end of the year. But 90 plus case studies of people just like you that worked with our team to launch, grow, and supersize their portable, profitable travel business. We'd love to talk about helping you too. So you can go to careersonvacation.com forward slash ready now if you know that that sounds like something you wanna do and you wanna apply for the program. And until then, I wanna remind you guys, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you get all of our amazing content that comes out every week. I want to wish you so much love, so much abundance, and happy holidays from our home to yours. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys. Hey guys, Cindy Williams here. If you like
like that last video, make sure you check out my other content to help you grow and scale your very own travel business. And also I invite you to travel around the world with me and find out what I'm doing in my portable, profitable, award-winning travel business. Check out the videos.